Hi guys, it's Mike from KO8 and you're joining me today at the Rexar Summit Palm. Uh, I'm going to take you for a push and pull exercise guys, okay, or a, a, a sort of workout. Basically working on a superset premises and a, a superset basically is two different muscle groups work back to back, okay. Uh, the way I'm going to do it today, I'm going to do four different supersets, okay? So a push, a pull, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. It's not rocket science. There's a cumulative volume effect in this, guys, okay? I would normally run that three times per superset, which would give you around 24 working sets. And the way I'm working today is basically using quite sneaky bio biomechanical disadvantageous positions, okay? So the, the movements almost get harder or easier depending on the position of my body angle. I'm also going to be switching between suspension and resistance and, uh, and they'll be as real as it gets, this will be in real time, okay? So the first exercise we're going to do guys is actually a really challenging one, it's a, it's a decline suspended push up, okay? When we're thinking about our pushes and our pulls we've got to be thinking about the biomechanics that go on there, okay? When we're talking about a lot of our pushes it's important to know that our, our muscles never actually push. They're always just pulling around fulcrums or using levers to uh, contract and pull. And that's what I want you to think about on our pushes today. Okay, I want you to think about our chest muscle predominantly pulling our humerus across our body to our midline. That's called adduction. Okay, guys. Then also when we're doing our back exercises or our pull exercises, and I want you to be thinking with your arms, okay? Your arms are basically just a facilitator in this. I want you to be thinking about the muscles in the back. And I want you to be thinking about them pulling or drawing your elbow back, okay? So that's called extension at, at, at different angles, okay? So as we flex away from our body, we wanna be pulling it back nice and tight, whether it's a high row or a low row variation, okay? So I'll take you through the first push and talk through a few different positions with regards to our elbow. A lot of people on this, I see they flare their elbows too wide. We wanna be keeping our pushes variations or our push variations in this scapular plane, okay? So just, just a, roughly 45 degrees away from our body rather than flaring right out to the side. Okay guys, so I'll take you through the first one. Like I said, this is gonna be as real as it gets. So we're gonna be into the harness mode at the, on the first exercise, and we're gonna be on suspension, okay? The trickiest part of this is actually getting it into the harness, getting your feet into it. If you wanna have it a little bit lower, guys, or even just start with a push-up, that's no problem. The great thing about the KO8 is you can go into the harness mode on the resistance bands to give you assistance on the push-up if that's what you need, okay? But for the purpose of this, I'm gonna go hardcore. So for the first push exercise, I'm gonna get my feet into the harnesses, okay? I'm gonna come a little bit away so I've got that angle with my body. I'm squeezing my bum. My core should really already be engaged in this position, guys. If it's not, there's, there's probably something wrong. From here, I'm flexing at my elbows, getting my chin to the floor, then driving my elbows together. Okay, and what I'm thinking about doing is contracting this chest to pull my elbows towards the midline. Slow and controlled, and then pull towards the midline. Okay, I'm not gonna do the full exercise or the full workout with you today, guys, because of the tempo. This is something that's missed a lot of in, uh, in workouts today, and basically, the tempo is the speed that the different lifts are performed at. Okay, and when we talk about tempo, we're talking about four different numbers effectively. The first number being the eccentric loading part. The second number being the pause between the eccentric and the concentric. And then the fourth number being the pause between the concentric and back to the eccentric. Okay guys, so that's the first exercise. The second exercise we're gonna go into is a high and wide row, okay? So from here, I'm gonna be off my heels to reduce my surface area, make this a little bit tougher. 45 degree angle with my, with my torso. Again, driving my hips into extension, 
to engage my glutes and get everything nice and tight like a plank. Okay, and then coming up off the heels and driving our elbows out and wide. Okay, into that extension position behind our back, trying to squeeze our shoulder blades together, slowly control that lowering movement. Okay guys, so they're the first two exercises. I'm gonna run this through with you, okay? Just to give you some pointers through the first set, and then we'll move on, okay? So back up into this sling position, like I said guys, as real as it gets. Down into the push-up position, feet in the slings. I like to have it just around my ankles, okay guys? Gives me a bit of stability. I actually come out so that the suspension is, is fully taut, okay, on the KO8. This stops me swinging and it allows me to keep the tension in the right place. From here, I drop down, squeeze, drive my elbows together. Okay, guys, talking about our tempo. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Good, keep it going. Two, one. Drive those elbows to the midline. Staying in that scapular plane, don't flare too much. Okay, two more guys. Two, one. Staying in that tall plank. And drive him up. Okay, exercise one. Okay, I like to do this auto-regulated again, guys, with your rest. Compose yourself, control your breathing, think about the muscles you're gonna be using. Like I said, on this position, when we're going into this extension behind our back, we're trying to squeeze all the muscles in our upper back together, okay? So, gonna take the handles down now, come out so we're taut on the trainer, going up onto our heels. As you can see, as I extend, in engaging my glutes, my shoulders are re retracted, my scapulas are depressed, and then I'm driving out with my elbows. Three, two, okay. Nice and controlled up. Okay, good. Elbow drive out and up. Control it back down. If you wanna make it a bit easier, guys, you can adjust your body angle on this. If it's done correctly at the right tempo, it can be really difficult anyway, especially if you're controlling that eccentric portion and you're also controlling your scapula and keeping that shoulder girdle tight. Control it down. Keep going, you've got three more reps. Two, one. Good, control, control, control. Elbow drive out. Last one, guys. Elbow drive, contract, and let it back in. Okay, so the way that would work is I'll go back to back. Three sets, 10 to 12 reps, on each exercise, okay guys? And that's your conventional superset. Like I said, I'm using a lot of upper back musculature there. Variation in exercises can come because of a board coach. Slight variations in movements can challenge the muscle belly in a completely different position, okay? For the next two movements or the next superset, I'm gonna stay on the suspension trainer and I'm gonna go into a push-up variation or like a fly press and then another pull variation. It's a lot more sort of easier for my body, but tougher because of the angle that I place my body in. Okay, so what I'm actually gonna do on this one is just take a little bit more slack off the door, okay? Extend the strap. Like I said, I'm gonna get it as real as it gets, guys. I'm gonna drop the handles just below my knees, okay? From this position, I'm gonna take it out, okay? And again, we don't wanna be flaring too much here, guys. I'm thinking about the angle of my hum humerus, okay? Or my upper arm. From here, I'm gonna depress my shoulders, get in the right position by walking my feet back, okay? From here, I'm gonna drop down, maintaining tension in my chest, then I'm gonna drive up, and then bring my arms together, okay? The way lines of vector work, or the positioning of your body is key to this, when you actually get up into the extended position, you kind of lose tension on the suspension trainer. The way I generate it is by keeping my arms out into that scapular plane 
and then squeezing the suspension trainer together, okay? So I'll talk you through that again. I'm in that scapular plane. I retract my shoulder blades so they're nice and tight, okay? I walk my feet back until I can start feeling that tension on my chest. Then I flex at my elbows. I abduct my humerus and I bring my elbows together on the concentric part. Again, you can see the controlled movements in this, guys, okay? Remember, we always speak about speed disguising inefficiencies or deficient movements. So then, when we're in that position, we're gonna transition then straight into another row variation. Because I've lengthened the KO8 now, it'll allow me to get a different body angle. So instead of being a 45 degrees angle, now it's a little bit more acute. And that just means that there's more gravity acting on my body. So the body weight's gonna play, make it harder for me to row. The first variation was an easier uh, torso angle, but it was a harder biomechanical row variation with a flared elbow away from my center of mass. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tuck my elbows, get them nice and tight to my center of mass, closer to the, like the center line of my body, okay? And I'm gonna drive and I'm gonna supinate my hands upwards, okay guys? And that looks a little bit like this. As you can see, my angle, body angle to the floor is more acute. The, the resistance is already a lot heavier, guys, okay? So from here, my shoulders are tight and I'm driving my elbows back, okay? Extending them behind my body while supinating my hands. That's two reps, guys. You should be following me here. Okay, squeeze them back. Remember what we're thinking? We're thinking those muscles in the back are pulling our humerus behind our body. We're not really pulling with our arms. You will feel your biceps, guys, as a secondary. Okay, that's six. Seven. Elbow drive. Eight. Nine. One more. And control it back down. Good. Okay, awesome guys. So this is the second superset, okay? Next one we're gonna go on to, we're gonna actually go on to the resistance part. This is one of my favorite exercises with the KO8. Again, speaking about that biomechanics and how to develop a chest, we're really looking for adduction or driving this humerus across our body. And this is perfect for it, okay? This is a single arm exercise initially, and then we go into a hinge row variation. So to save a bit of time, I'm gonna go with one black and one red, and then I'm gonna take off the suspension chain or the big black carabiner, clip it up to the top, and then likewise. Like I said, guys, as real as it gets here, take your time, have a little breather if you need it. So we're on the same amount of resistance, okay? We've got one black, one red. And the focus on here, okay, is getting tension on the band, turning our torso angle, okay, so my chest is loaded, getting in a nice dynamic stance position so I can lock down my hips, drive across, and get a really tight contraction on this chest, okay? The other two variations, guys, haven't really allowed us to get this humerus really across the midline, which is a the way we get a really tight contraction on our chest. So this is a, a great method of doing that, okay? You'll be able to get more weight through a press that goes across your chest than you will a fly, okay? Because of that lever principle. So I turn my body and I really look to drive my hand across my chest and really get that really tight contraction there, okay? So we're gonna go 10 sets, 10 reps on each side, and then on to our next variation of a pull. Next variation of a pull, again, I'm changing my body angle and using a different type of resistance. The bands are brilliant, okay? The way they work on a strength curve is they actually get harder towards the end of the muscle strength curve, which is pretty much what I really wanna do. So from here, I've got the two handles, okay? I'm gonna drop into a hinge position, okay? My hands are turned over. I'm gonna 
hinge up my hips, bend my knees, okay, a little flexion. I'm gonna let it pull my arms away from me, and then I'm just driving my elbows back. Four, five, six. Okay, keep it going. Think about those muscles in the back, pulling that elbow back towards my waistline. Nine, and 10. Okay. Okay, guys, I flew through the first part, that chest, uh, chest press. But again, same principle applies. I'm gonna go three sets. 10 to 12 reps on both of those exercises. Now the last exercise or the last superset we're gonna do is again, a fly variation into a pull variation, okay? And again, basically we should be tired by now. And these are just getting the last little bits out. You wanna be doing your pushes and pulls predominantly 80% of them should be compounds. Or big presses like we're doing our push-ups our wide presses, then into our cross chest presses, and then the rest can come from flies and different fly variations. So if we go into the last exercise, where again, we're on this resistance setting, okay, my arms are nice and wide, my chest is prominent, I'm trying to face up towards the corner of the room, my elbows are slightly bent, okay, and I'm just bringing them towards the midline. Again, better on the flies, I can keep that resistance coming from the band by bending my elbows ever so slightly, okay? Okay, good, keep it going. I'm gonna do a couple more reps with you on this, okay guys? Okay, good, just keeping that chest in front of your shoulders, nice and easy. Good, couple more reps guys, three more reps. One, two, three, good. Okay, lovely guys. Okay, last one we're gonna do is a reverse fly. I'm gonna actually have to drop the resistance on this, believe it or not. <laughs> because of the length of your arms and the muscles used, you really don't need a lot of resistance on this. If you get into the right positions, it can really blow up your, your sort of posterior, posterior delts all sorts of through your traps and your rhomboids if you get in the right position. And by right positions, guys, I mean already retracted, already scapulas down and back, get tension in the right place, and then all we're thinking about is driving those elbows back while maintaining a consistent elbow position. So what that actually looks like, shoulders back and down, elbows driving back, and a really tight contraction, okay? If you can get it right to the center line, and hold in that position, that's great. If not, I would just go to a limited range and hold there, okay? So you can do partials on this, it's not a problem, or you can go right to the midline, reassess your position, and then go from there. But we're really looking to maintain this consistent arm position, and keep the press in our shoulders, a nice controlled movement, rather than flailing with our arms, okay? If you notice how quiet the KO8 is, guys, that's because of the control of the movement, okay? If I'm under tension and I'm doing this, you can hear it rattling about, I haven't got tension properly, or my, my body position's out of place, whatever it might be. So get in the right line, okay? And this is greasing the groove, guys. Shoulders down and back, arms already in the right place, and then take them out. Controlled. Good, okay, I'm gonna go 10 reps with you guys. Three. Four. Good, keep it going. Six. Drive your elbows back. Good, seven, nearly cheated then. Eight, two more. Nine, and last one. 10, lovely. Okay guys, as you can see, it's not rocket science, small variations make a huge difference. This is a quite a high volume uh, workout, like I said, but because of the, how the movements are strung together, uh, you should be able to get through it quite comfortably, but have a crazy pump on a lot of the big muscles in your back, but also your chest, your shoulders, and, uh, and everywhere else, really. Okay, 
Thank you for joining me with the workout, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, fire away. Um, otherwise, I'll catch you again.